Yeah, he's doing so good. All right. This is Sebastian. He's a great Pyrenees. He was rescued by one of my um, clients who's actually kind of like a friend now. I've been grooming his dogs for so long. Anyways, he he used to be scared of his own. Sh well, he still is kind of scared of his own shadow. Um, sometimes if there's like a sudden noise back here, he'll he'll kind of, you know, react. And when I first met him years ago, um, he wouldn't even come near me. He would go run away. He would bark at me. He would, um, you know, I remember the first time I tried to groom him, he growled at me a few times and it was really scary. If you've never had a great Pyrenees growl at you, you're missing out. You're, you're not living life to its fullest. <laughs> it's an experience. Um, but anyways, now he trusts me. And I've built this trust because I not only groom him, but I groom his sister, who's also a great Pyrenees. And so anyways, he because I don't really push it and whenever I come and he doesn't really want to be near me, I don't make him be near me. I don't force the relationship onto him, you know. And so now gradually he's learned to trust me. He's learned to be OK with me. And I actually combed his whole side out here. Oh. Uh, and I even trust him now to put my face near him. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that until you actually have that trust. There we go. But he actually gave me a few kisses already today. All right. Um, I, I usually groom dogs on a table, but he's just way too big. Look at him. If I, if I lay down next to him, I'd be the little spoon. You know what I'm saying? I could be the little spoon for him. So that's why I don't use a table. <laughs> All right. So I'm just gonna go through and comb him, get all this dead undercoat out because um, we're coming, we're gonna start coming into fall pretty soon, right? So his coat is gonna start going through a change soon. And what's happening is it's getting rid of a lot of last season's coat, undercoat, um, you know, some primary hairs as well. But this is what they do to stay fresh each season. So they stay clean. They have clean clothes to wear. We get to change our clothes, you know, take our clothes off, wash it, buy new clothes. They, this is their clothes and it grows out of their skin. And so the only way they can change their clothes and keep fresh new clothes on for each new season is by removing last season's clothes, right? Last season's hair. That way it creates room in their skin to grow the new season's hair. And a lot of times, even when you don't brush out the old hair, um, a coat like this will usually start to blow out on its own. You'll start to see it looks really rough and clumpy. Look at this. But this is called trust, you know? He trusts me now. Before when I would do his legs here, oh, see, he's a little, I'm sorry, buddy. He's a little sensitive. Most dogs are for their feet and their legs, their back feet. But he used to growl at me. And that was, uh, that was exciting. <laughs> All right. And what you'll notice is that when you comb your dog out, when you brush your dog out like this, they're going to smell better. Because when you have a smelly dog, usually it's not your dog that smells. It's this that smells. It's this hair. So this fuzzy dead hair. It will have, it's what smells, just like their dirty clothes, right? And especially when it gets wet, because these hair fibers are dry and it's frayed and open, right? And so bacteria, the odor causing bacteria, dirt and everything just rests in those little crevices, those little, those little, you know, the frayed hair, right? And because hair is fibrous by nature, when, you, when it absorbs water, it, it soaks up the water, it, water soaks inside the hair fibers and then it pushes out that bacteria out to the surface that's why you get that wet dog smell so you smell it more when it gets wet but this hey what's up mary this is what's causing all the smell the odor the itchiness all of that and once you brushed all that out the dog actually starts to feel so soft and silky and clean like they had a bath but they didn't you know and that's why i call this a dry bath um i i do spray some conditioners um but yeah, this is what's going to get you all the results that you're looking for from the bath. You're going to get it from the brushing, actually. So that's why I say brush more, bathe less. I'm trying to get, change people's perspective. Instead of saying, oh, man, my dog smells. I need to wash them. No, it's going to make it worse. 
And especially if you don't brush all of this out and you wash them in it, in a few days, they're gonna smell worse than before. So what I, I'm trying to change people's mindset, instead of thinking, oh, my dog's smelly, I need to wash them. It would be better to think to yourself, my dog smells, I need to brush them, you know? Hey, what's up, Autumn? All right. There we go. And now I'm gonna change over to a slicker brush for his tail because his tail is a little thick. And so instead of going through with this comb here and pulling at it and making him uncomfortable, let me just pull this over towards us. I can use this slicker brush here and break up, separate the hairs first. There we go. And that way it's not really gonna pull out a lot of that dead hair, but it is gonna separate it for me so that I can get the comb through better. Sebastian, you are so handsome. Are you looking at yourself? <laughs> wow, buddy, look how handsome you are. Look at this. Pamela says, do you groom cats? No, I do not. I love cats and I think they're amazing. And they're beautiful, but I just don't have that same connection with a cat. If a cat were to hiss at me, I'm gone. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but with the dog, when he growls at me, I feel like, okay, I understand where that's coming from. I feel like I understand the dog. I feel like I connect with them. And that's why I feel like this was, this, this, is, this work was made for me. <laughs> I was made to do this work. I really feel that way. And when dogs bite me, um, they never really bite me too hard. You know, I've been bit really hard before several times, but yeah, even when dogs bite me, I feel like we're communicating, you know, like we may be arguing at that moment, but <laughs> what's, what's up, Bubbles and Biscuits Paspa? So nice to see you too. Alrighty, see that? So now that I brushed out the tail and then I combed through it, and it's still, I can still feel some of that dead rough hair, but I'm going to get that with a different tool. Oh, a nice little tip that I learned um, from Christina Pulaski. She's like a, one of those big time, you know, well-known groomers. Um, but Christina, I remember she said that if it takes you more than five or six swipes, then you're probably using the wrong tool. So like this, for example, um, I wasn't able to get it through the tail at first, right? So I wasn't, you know, I, I was using the wrong tool. And then once I got this, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I mean, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> but yeah, I feel it, right? But yeah, I remember she was saying that if you find yourself going over and over at it with the same tool in the same area, you're probably using the wrong tool, you know, trying to pick up another tool, you know, something a little uh, more fine, I guess. Okay, good boy. All right, so now, let me get the other side, buddy. There we go. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I know it's uncomfortable for you. All right. Now, I don't have a charger um, attached to my phone right now. So whenever the battery dies, we're gone. <laughs> I'm just going to run it until the battery goes out. And then we'll see you next time we see you, I guess. Wow, look at that. See that? This is called plucking or hand stripping, hand plucking. But you can literally see the fuzzy hair. Like I can tell the difference just by looking at it. Like, oh yeah, that's dead hair. And it comes right out, see that? And you can just pull it out with your hands. Look at that, it's called hand stripping. Right, buddy? Okay. But as I do this, he's feeling softer and softer, cleaner and cleaner. He's looking more and more white, you know? White dogs will look whiter, black dogs will look blacker, brown dogs or any kind of pattern that your dog has, those patterns and those colors will look brighter and bolder, all just by brushing them out like this. It's just like a horse. 
I'm not sure um, how many people have uh, ever taken like a horseback riding class. I did when I was a little kid, summer camp. And I was surprised that they told us that, and, and even in some equestrians now that I talk to, they say, yeah, you don't really wash a horse because you're going to wash away the natural oils on their skin that protect their hair and their skin. And you're going to get a lot of skin issues, a lot of problems, you know, with the horse. And they said that it's better, it's, it's necessary, not even better, it's necessary to brush your horse every day. And they have all these different curry brushes and stuff that you brush your horse with. Um, basically what we're doing now, just de-shedding, you know, getting all this dead hair out. That's what they do with horses every single day, you know, and they rarely wash them and they stay clean and shiny. That's because this is what's going on. This is what they're doing. Right. And so the, when you look, when you think of a dog, it doesn't really make sense to us. It's counterintuitive because if we don't wash every day, if we don't take a shower every day, we start to smell, right? But with dogs, if they don't wash it, I mean, if they don't get brushed every day, they start to smell. And if you wash them too often, they will start to smell. They're not meant to be washed too often. So one thing I learned from the International Society of Canine Cosmetologists, um, ISCC, it's in their study material, but um, the canine skin goes into like overdrive a, a little bit. It, it reacts to the stimulation from the bath as an attack on the surface of the skin. That's how it interprets it. So on a cellular level, we're attacking the surface of the skin when we wash the dog. We're stripping off the oils and everything with the shampoo. And when we do that, their skin kicks into overdrive for about two to three weeks. They say about 21 days. So about two to three weeks, their skin is producing more skin cells and more oil at a more rapid pace to replace, replenish what it thinks was attacked off the surface of their skin. So if their skin is working a little harder, a little, um, you know, a little more uh, for about two, three weeks after we wash them, then I think it's best to wash them maybe every four to six weeks or even longer. Give their chance, give their skin a chance to just breathe and function normally, you know, once it's calmed down after the bath. But if we're washing our dogs every two, three weeks, your dog's skin never has a chance to just function and breathe. It's always in that recovery mode. You're kicking it right back in. And so then you're going to have flaky, greasy, smelly dog, right? Because we're washing them too often. We're loving them to death. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're loving them too hard. It's not a lack of love. It's a lack of the right information. You know, these people love their dogs. That's why they're washing them so often because they love their dogs and they want their dogs to be happy and clean. What they don't know is that it's actually counterintuitive. They're actually making the problem worse by washing their dog more often. You see, <laughs> if, if, if they could just stop themselves from washing their dog because their dog is so stinky and just realize the dog is stinkier because I keep washing them, it's perpetuating it, you know, then they can just take a step back and say, instead of washing my dog, I'm going to spend some time and really comb them out because this is the hard part. Washing a dog is easy. You know, sometimes I, I remember people, my clients would tell me like, if I wash my dog beforehand, uh, could you give me a discount? And I tell them only if you do all the prep work like I would first and your dog comes out clean, right? Because if, if they just wash their dog and they don't do all of this, they don't, they don't brush all of this out first, then I'm going to come in. I'm going to have to fix that. You know what I'm saying? Just like how they say that only a rich person can afford a cheap paint job. Why is that? Well, it's because all the prep work that goes into a proper paint job, all the labor that goes into preparing the wall for the new paint, it, to do that properly takes a lot of work and a lot of labor, a lot of skill. And that's actually the magic. That's what keeps the new color paint lasting and looking great. But if you skip steps and you don't do it properly, guess what? Within a few months, you're going to see chips, bubbles, cracks. And then the, no the new painter that comes in to try to fix that, they have a lot more work on their hands now. And they're going to charge a lot more, which is why they say only a rich person can afford a cheap paint job, right? So same thing. It's like I, I try to explain to people, um, if you 
you know, if you do all of this, I'd be happy to just wash your dog for free. <laughs> you know, like this is where all of the hard work is. This is where all the labor and all of the results, frankly, all the results that you're looking for, a nice, clean, soft dog. This is where you're going to get those results. It's in this brushing process, not the washing. It's the brushing. Alrighty. There's no amount of shampoo or conditioner or any kind of, you know, unless you do have those really expensive systems, bathing systems, where it uses those micro bubbles and you're jetting all of this stuff out. But unless you're prepared to spend like, you know, I don't know how much those machines cost. I think the one in Cave Creek, Arizona, um, where I was working at Yves St. Bernard, I, I think she was saying it was like a hundred, hundreds of thousands of dollars, that O2 machine. <laughs> that yeah but i mean if you have a machine like that then yeah of course you know use the technology but i prefer this old school method of just going through and spending time and combing it all out by hand i feel like it's a way to bond with the dog it's a way to get, earn their trust it's a way to earn their you know the respect and just like caesar milan says the three pillars of a great relationship trust respect and love right trust respect and love and i feel like once you have their trust and they respect you then that door opens up for them to start to love you and they start to realize wow this person must love me because he's spending the time to make me feel better there we go all right i'm gonna turn you over okay buddy so i can get this other side all right you're gonna turn around and bite me no okay Awesome. Thank you, buddy. Oh. <laughs> okay. So now I can comb this leg. All righty. Oh. All right. Let me see if there are any questions that came in. Any questions about what I said? Because I know that it's not really what we're used to thinking. Oh, hold on. Okay. Alrighty. I think Sebastian is trying to figure out who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. It takes me about four hours to do a full groom on my little guy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hour of brushing. Yup. Yup. We will just enjoy until you vent. Oh, nice, Otto. <laughs> sending the bird. Hey, Debbie. Yes. Thanks for sending the birthday message. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome, Debbie. I was actually surprised that anybody would even care that I would wish them a happy birthday. But happy birthday, Debbie. That's awesome. You made me feel amazing. You know, the fact that somebody would even want me to wish them happy birthday. Wow. It's an honor. It was an honor to wish you happy birthday, Debbie. All righty. Alrighty, and he's actually doing much better. That was the longest he actually just laid and stood still for me. Uh, we have that gate up right now because he usually pulls me and drags me around. Um, sometimes, one time, um, he dragged me across the floor. I was holding onto this leash, <laughs> and he what like went over to the other side, and I was literally being dragged on the floor. And this is very slidey material, <laughs> slippery material. I slid. <laughs> he drug me across the floor. So he is super strong and he he moves whenever he wants. But this is so incredible that he's actually letting me. And that's why I, I wanted to film this. I just wanted to show people because I think I have a, a video of him before when I first started grooming him. And you can see how hesitant he was and how hesitant I was because I didn't fully trust him yet. And I don't think he fully trusted me either. There you go, buddy. Yeah, I can see it. So I can see it, but the cone is not getting it. So that's what I was saying earlier, how if, it, if you're not really getting what you're looking at and you've made more than a few swipes at it, you're probably using the wrong tool. So I probably have to go down to a smaller comb, a little finer comb to get that. But yeah, right here, I can see all that. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. Good boy, Sebastian. Yeah, I am sorry, buddy. There we go. No, don't do that. Don't show me your teeth, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. I would have been scared to do that before, <laughs> but now I trust him and he trusts me. And I don't know if you just saw at that angle, but he was just giving me kisses. <laughs> okay. There we go. Are we still? Okay, we're still on. All right, Sebastian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. All right. After this, I'm grooming a dog named Teddy. <clears throat> and I've shown Teddy before. Um, he's a, what is he? Teddy's like a Bichon mix. But um, yeah, he, Teddy was really, really aggressive when I first started grooming him. Um, the reason why he, I started grooming him in the first place was because he got kicked out of a grooming shop and yeah, he had some behavior issues, but um, I've been working with him, and he actually is super sweet, and he doesn't do any of that stuff anymore. He, I can't remember the last time he bit me. So maybe after this, um, when I go groom um, Teddy, I'll stream that and show you guys, you know, the improvement in his behavior. He's come such a far, long way. He, he went from uh, growling and barking at me and then every every little touch, like every little thing that I would do, he would snap. He would snap at me, ah, 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 you know, and growl at me. And it was really difficult. But now you would almost think that I'm making it up. Like I'm talking about a different dog, the way he acts. He's so sweet with me now. And he's so cooperative. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll show that one. I'll take my charger inside the next house and uh, show that one. But for now... I'm going to go ahead and change up. I'm going to change to the regular comb now. So see, I'm, I'm gradually working down. I used to start with this. And next, next time I come, I may have to because he may be matted because it's, it's going to be more closer to fall. And once the sunlight changes, once they, get, once they sense the change in sunlight, their coat will start to change over. And so he might be blowing coat. And so I might start with this not let, uh, next time. This time it wasn't necessary. So this time I started with this one. It's more of a wide tooth comb, right? And I like this handle because, you know, it just helps grip it easier when you're going through that thick coat. Now that I can get that through, I'm gonna move down to this comb here, a little more finer comb. And I probably will start with the more um, coarse side and then finish with this finer side here. Any questions? Let me see here. Um, Sandy, it's strange to see you sitting down on the job. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. Not just sitting down, baby. I was a little spoon earlier. <laughs> no, I was kidding. <laughs> All right. Okay. The ears need a little cleaning. I'll get to that. There we go. And I'll probably trim up the paws next so he doesn't slip and slide so much. There we go. But first things first, I like to tackle the hardest thing first, get it out the way. And that's getting him combed out, his whole entire body combed out. 
I know that's going to take the longest. I know it's going to require the most amount of work and, and sweat. So this is what I want to get tackle first. And then I can trim his feet, you know, make his feet nice and round, do his nails. I can do all that stuff, you know, pretty easily and finish up. But this is going to take a while. And I love it because it's honest work. The only way to possibly get him all combed out is to actually just go through and do it. Wow, you guys are so far away. But that's why I love this work is because there's no faking it. You know, once I get them all combed out, there's no way you can put this hair back in there and, and make it seem like I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? But if I don't actually spend the time and I don't actually get them all combed out and I don't actually spend the energy and the time, then no matter how much I lie about it, no matter how much I fluff it, you know, you're still going to be able to tell. There's still going to be a difference. It's going to be like, wait a minute, my dog's still feels a little rough and they smell a little bit, you know, and they don't feel so soft, you know, there we go. But once you do it, uh, you can't, you can't undo it. You know, <laughs> like it's, it's, it's out, it's done. All righty. There we go. So after this, I'm probably going to trim up the feet, trim up the nails, and then I'm going to go through with the undercoat rake, and that's going to really do the fine tuning, get a lot of that dead undercoat out that the comb won't be able to pull out. All right. I think that's really good advice, though, that Christina Pulaski taught us. Um, if it's more, if you're do, taking more than five or six swipes with the same tool, then you're probably using the wrong tool. It's probably time to change. So. I'm going to go through this, and then once it starts to go through easily, then I'm going to change the undercoat rake. But before I change the undercoat rake, I'm going to trim up the paws and do the nails. And that, uh, sometimes he does good, sometimes he doesn't. So we'll see. There we go. But um, the owners told me that they did give him some CBD, some calming medicine. So that might be why he's also calm as well. You know, he trusts me, he knows me, but also, you know, the chill pills do help. <laughs> okay. All righty. Okay. There we go. Wow, huge, isn't he? Okay. Oh my goodness. You guys are just getting shots of our feet. Take no take no fetish page. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, is there a question coming in here? Do your little guy have a short, long or short hair? I have a loss of so long. Yeah, you know what, Cynthia? Even if you have a loss of so, it's still the same thing. Um, you're still going to have to go through and comb out a lot of this dead hair because dogs have complex follicles, no matter which dog it is. Long hair, short hair, they all have complex follicles, meaning that they all grow bundles of hair. And a lot of the hairs are secondary hairs and they have to be pulled out. They have to be removed so that it has room to grow that new hair. I have a lot of Lhasa Aso clients who just never thought, never, it never occurred to them that they have to comb that dead hair out of their dogs. And when you work this comb through your dog's coat, you will get a lot of this kind of hair, even though they're long hair. All right. <clears throat> okay. Ugh. I'm gonna go ahead and trim his feet. All right, buddy. And then do his nails. All righty. I find that the less of a deal you make of it, like this, 
is usually one of his sensitive spots where he reacts. So if I start to prep him for it, I'm like, all right, we're going to, we're going to do this. Okay. And I kind of hold it hesitantly and, you know, make a big, make a big show of it. Then he's, I think it makes him more and more nervous, more and more anxious. But if I just grab it and I just start working, like it's just another day, you know, like it's just business like as usual, bring it a little closer. Then he also has less reason to react to it because I'm not making it a big deal. I'm not like, okay, so I'm going to hold this foot, okay. You know, no, just pick it up and just start working on it, matter of factly. And then, see, there we go. There we go. Experience, you know, like the more the more you work around dogs, the more you start to pick up on things too. Like they're kind of like children, you know. So sometimes the anticipation of it causes more fear, and so instead of building it up and making it a big thing, just simply uh, pick up the foot that you're about to work on. Yeah, okay and just start working on it. There we go, good boy. You're okay, you're all right. Good boy, Sebastian. All right, so just trimming all the hair from under his pads so he doesn't slip and slide. There we go. And then I'm gonna do his nails next. There we go. There we go. When you have a big dog like this, that's so scared of everything, it really does become dangerous sometimes because um, he doesn't really realize how big he is and how intimidating he is. He's scared of everything. He, he probably thinks that he's like a little Maltese or something, you know, the way he acts. So he doesn't know that when he re reacts to something and bites out of fear, that's going to cause a lot of damage. You know, he doesn't realize that, I feel like. I feel like he thinks that he's this tiny dog that's just, you know, scared of everything. <sighs> All righty. Uh, let's see. Okay, awesome. People are really in. I have a border collie constantly is brushing. He itches a lot if I don't brush him every day. Yep. What can I do? Brush every day. <laughs> that's, you know. You know, I love that saying Zig Ziglar says, you know how he says, like, people say motivation doesn't last. Um, he says, neither does a shower. That's why we recommend it every day, right? Well, dogs, it's not good to shower them every day because, like I explained earlier, it makes them actually more uh, smelly. It actually, it actually causes more skin issues. They need their oil that's being produced by their skin. They need that to, cut to protect them. Every time we wash them, we're washing it off. So with dogs, instead of a shower daily, like how we keep ourselves clean, it's brushing daily. That's how we keep them clean because they have hair all over their body. This needs to be brushed every single day. And that's why um, I remember reading this book, several breed books, and I went straight to the grooming section. Um, I went to the library and picked out like all kinds of breed books. And I went to the grooming section on every single breed. And every single breed, it mentioned the same thing. If you don't have time to brush your dog, you probably don't have time for a dog. Um, 10 on sanitary. Okay, perfect. Awesome. They're answering each other's questions. But yeah, I really think that that's true. Um, if you don't have time to brush your dog every day, you probably don't have time for a dog. And that's just the honest truth. If you don't have time to wash, I mean, walk your dog, you know, each day, you know, probably don't have time for a dog. How often should I wash him? Lillian, in my opinion, um, four to six weeks, the longer you can go between washing your dog, the better, in my opinion, because like I explained earlier, um, their skin goes into like a recovery mode. 
on a cellular level, their skin interprets the bath as an attack on their skin. So they're going to start to produce more oil, more skin cells at a more rapid pace for about 21 days, for about three weeks to replenish what was washed off. And so I think that if we're washing our dogs every two to three weeks, we're never giving their chance the time to just breathe and function normally. We're, it's always in that recovery mode. It's always kicking into overdrive because um, every time it's about to go back to normal, we're washing them again, you know? So in my opinion, it would be, be it would be better to wash your dog if you have a long haired dog that needs to be washed regularly, maybe once every four to six weeks, you know? Um, six weeks would be better, but if you're using conditioner, using good products, every four weeks shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem. Curious, I took my multi food to a new groomer. I was heartbroken when I arrived and saw she plucked the hair from her ears. She's having ear problems now. Do you, ooh, do you know have a natural remedy that I could try? Um, I don't. I would I would say um, maybe to have a, have a vet look at it because um, what. It may not even be the groomer's fault. The groom, because I pluck ears too, because especially if the hair is um, preventing air from flowing through the ear canal, that's going to cause ear infections. And so it, there could have been already an infection. The ear could have already been compromised when the groomer pulled that hair out. Now it, um, by, by pulling that hair out, is exposing that new skin, that raw skin, and you know it's 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 just open now to all of whatever whatever was in there and going on. So it could have made things worse a little bit, but the groomer was probably doing what they thought was helping, you know? And also the a vet that I talked to, he told me that he believes that if the ear is already compromised, just go ahead and pluck it because at least now it has a clean environment and you, and they can actually get to the infected area and treat it better. So yeah, maybe um, your vet can give you like a, you know, ear infection, you know, medicine, medication for that infection. Um, but over the counter, man, I'm not sure. Maybe you can try some witch hazel, um, you know, cause I know that we uh, groomers will use witch hazel. So maybe you could try some witch, witch hazel, um, dab a cotton ball in it and then just very gently and don't even, don't even go into the canal, just very gently clean, you know, around the outside. Um, with some witch hazel, maybe. Um, let's see. I've got mine trained to actually like washing his butt and face several times a day, full bath every four to five weeks, unless, of course, you find something in there. Okay, cool, cool. All righty. So now let me do the nails. Oh, good job, Sebastian. And this time around, it, it really is a little easier. It's been easier with all of my clients' dogs, um, actually. And I really think it's because um, we're kind of in the heart of summer. You know, we're kind of in the summertime going into fall. And so we're not actually transitioning yet. So I feel like their skin is still kind of holding off. And so I've had it a little easier. It hasn't really been taking me too much time. And my dogs um, haven't really been too mad at it these days. Um, and I really think that the next time I come, because it's August, yeah, in September, September, October, it's going to start to get hard again and you're gonna have a lot more work and it's gonna take more effort to get the same quality. There we go. I think a lot of groomers may make that connection, may, may, no, may notice every fall, it seems like every change of season, once we come into fall, it's just really tough for us like, for a little bit. The dogs are rougher. Um, they're more matted. Um, it just seems like it takes a little more effort to get them smooth and quality, you know, looking really nice. Um, then in December, in like the heart, middle of December, oh, Melissa, good morning. What's up? What's up, Melissa? Um, in the heart of December, it starts to get really tough again. And then in the spring, it's tough again. In the summer, it's tough again. And because it's all in response to the change of sunlight, the photo periods, the intensity and duration of the sun, it's all in response to that, the changing sunlight. That's why December 21st and January, uh, June 21st, the peak, the summer solstice, you know, the solstice days, the longest and shortest days of the year, that's when they say that that's the peak shedding days for dogs. So dogs will shed tremendously in the heart of summer around june 21st and the heart of winter around around december 21st 
because those are the longest and shortest days of the year. So as groomers, we get a little break sometimes like this, you know, but then next time I come, I am prepared for a lot more work. All right, buddy. You're such a good boy. Wow. Wow, I remember one time I was clipping his nails and uh, he showed me his teeth and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I guess I'll just die now. Okay. There we go. Good boy. Oh, and a little tip about clipping the nails. Right, Debbie, isn't he? Okay, so what I like to do is can I get a little closer to the nail here? Maybe. Let me try. Okay. So what I like to do to avoid um, clipping it too short ever is when you look at the nail, right? The nail, the it's the way it's shaped. There's like a tip here, and it and it goes down like this, right? It curls down like that, right? And so when it curls down like that, the nerve is right down here on the bottom. Let me see if I can zoom it in. No, no, I guess not. But see the, oh shoot, sorry. <laughs> Let me just try to explain it here. Just pretend that this is his nail, right? It's, it's curved down like this. The nerve is right here on the bottom. So if I clip his nail like this, right, right here, I'm going to clip that end of the nerve right down here and it's gonna bleed, right? So here's the angle I clip it at, right here, like that, 45 degree angle, see? So only my nail is being clipped and the nail curves down like this. So instead of clipping it here like this, I'm gonna clip it here like this. See that? So let me show you. Oh, if I clip this nail like this, I'm gonna clip that nerve. So I'm gonna come at it like this and just clip that triangle that's sticking out. See that right there, that triangle. And that way I can get close to the nerve, but the nerve's right down there and it's not gonna get clipped. See that? And then there we go, see that? So now all the nails are nice and short and clipped, but they're not gonna, it's not gonna bleed. It helps to repel. Okay, somebody just retracted the message. Okay, there we go. So that's, oh shoot. That's how I clip nails so that I don't ever clip too close. Now I have had recently, <clears throat> the nails bleed a little bit um, after the groom was done because I, I file the nails afterwards to make them nice and smooth. But I realized I was filing them a lot, really too close, because uh, I wanted to get right around that nerve and, and expose it um, so that it could get shorter and shorter. But because I, I filed it so close to the nerve, when they go outside and they walk on it, it, it would open it up and they would start to, their nails would start to bleed. So now I've kind of learned to back off a little bit. <laughs> and here's how I do it, nail filing. Okay, I'm going to go side, side, middle. So meaning I go down one side, I go down the other side, and then I do the middle. See that? Go one side, other side, middle. And I learned this from my friend Barbara, who originally taught me how to groom like 12 years ago, 10, 11 years ago. But um, yeah, Barbara is the one that taught me this because if you're, if you're a perfectionist like me and I struggle, you know, I, I'm trying not to be a perfectionist anymore, but um, if you're kind of have that OCD in you, then it's easy to just sit here and just, you know, do like this all day, right? And Barbara was like, you know, oh, how do you cut the paw, the hair in between the paws? I just comb it out and then just, Snip it off. There we go, like that. Um, but yeah, so this is called side side middle um, technique. Barbara taught me at Swanky Paws Pet Salon in Lawrenceville. 
But um, yeah, so just really easy. One side, other side, and then clean up the middle. Thank you, Sebastian. He's giving me kisses. There we go. There we go. And the weird thing is, even though he's a great Pyrenees, he doesn't have the rear dew claws. Isn't that weird? He doesn't have those rear dew claws like the other Pyrenees do. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Oh, and I see some hair sticking out. I'm, like, I'm going to clean all this up anyways because the, the tough the tufts of hair, you know, the little fur here on top of the hair, I mean, on top of the um, foot, I'm going to go ahead and soften that up and round it and trim it all around anyways, make it look like a nice round foot. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to come back to that when I finish. But here we go. That's interesting. Right, Melissa? I, I, like, I like this method. I've been doing this for like the past 11 years. I mean, I love it, but it's just side, side, middle. So right here, it's okay, it's all right. There we go, side, oops, side, and middle. Okay, one side, other side, and middle. There you go, Sebastian. There we go. Side, side, middle. One side, other side, middle. There we go. We got that deep claw right there. He has front deep claws. There we go. Side, side, and middle. There we go. Side side, middle, there we go, there we go, hold on, hold on Sebastian, there we go, good boy, good boy, There we go. So now all the nails are nice and smooth and round. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's not gonna scrape or scratch or anything. Look at that powder. You just take this and go, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did it, see, I did it. <laughs> I didn't sniff it, I promise. Okay, you know, just a, <laughs> a little pick me up. You know what I'm saying, when you're working? Anyways, um, I don't know why I do stuff like that. That's so stupid. Okay, here, my guy absolutely hates nail grinding and filing. Taken to the groomer every four weeks for nail trim. It's one thing I'm afraid, I'm afraid of, and he knows it. Nice, Mary. I, and he was scared of it too, you know. He used to growl at me. He used to show his teeth. It was, a, it was a really interesting experience doing his nails. But now, look, repetition, you know. Uh, let me see here. My dog hears me turn that on and he runs. <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh wow, we got some we got some inappropriate sense of humor in here. <laughs> it's all good. All right. <clears throat> now, I, I don't really do, do that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Look at my eyes, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I joke around I shouldn't joke around about it. Moving on, moving on. Okay, here we go. <sighs> So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to just round out the feet while I have them here. Let me put this back a little bit so you can see. There we go. So my slicker brush is over there. I like to use my slicker brush to comb it up, but awesome, William. We know it's a joke, awesome. Anyways, oh, <laughs> um, man, here we go. Just comb this up. Alrighty. And then I'm just gonna make everything nice and soft and round. Ha <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> Alright. If anybody knows Melissa personally, check in on her. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, anybody that <laughs> anybody that laughs that much at something that inappropriate, maybe she's not doing so good. Check up on Melissa, somebody. You know, <laughs> wellness check real quick. Say, hey, are you doing okay? Because <laughs> you should not be laughing at that kind of stuff. Anyways, okay. There we go. Oh, thank you, buddy. Okay. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it from there, but see? Uh, well, let me show you. So just by just by trimming just a little bit, you see how nice and round that foot is? See how nice and soft and round it is? And then this one here, you know, it's a little bit rough still, see? Okay. Do you have a favorite brand of shears? No, Debbie. Um, well, I like whatever shears work. You know, as long as it cuts, I'm good with it. You know? <laughs> All right. Okay, so I, I have to go. These swivel thumbs, I actually was not really liking it at first. But now that I'm using it, I really like it a lot. I really like these swivel thumbs. And this is a Foxy Roxy. I think this is called the Scorpion or something like that. But yeah, it was actually pretty cheap. I, I think I got it for like 120 bucks or something like that. Let, you know, it was, it was not that expensive, but I really like it. Okay. Oh, and here's a little trick. If you, if you don't really want to put your scissors down all the time, just flip it in like that, hold it. And then do the combing and then flip it back out. And then you've got the scissors right there in your hands to ready to go. There we go. All right. There we go. Two feet down. Just comb all this hair up in between the paws. You're okay. You're all right, buddy. Sebastian. There we go. Okay. And you know, um, scissor control is so important, how you hold the shears, and that way you have the most control and stability over your cuts. And I remember when I first started, I was watching people scissor and I'm just thinking like, oh my God, how am I ever going to get there? It's just practice, practice and patience and just keep doing it over and over. And then finally, now I can just look at a spot and even a dog that's like, ah, you know, if I get a second, boom, I can snip exactly where I want to snip now. <laughs> and, you know, like, it's just, it's just repetition. Anything. Practice makes improvements. You just keep practicing at it. You keep doing it. And you get better eventually over time. And that's just, there's no magic to it. There's no secret to it. And there's no exceptions. Really, there's no exceptions. No matter what it is, if you keep doing it, no matter how much you suck at it, you'll eventually start to get better. With enough time and um effort with enough time and effort there's no limit to what we can achieve with enough time and effort okay all righty there we go now that front foot is nice Okay, and then once I get him all nice and shaped, 
and nice and trimmed. I'm gonna go through with these undercoat rakes and that's gonna do be like the final finishing. This is almost like putting the wax on the car after you clean it. You know, after you wash the car and it's all clean, then you put, you put a nice uh, shine of wax on it to protect it, seal it, make it nice and shiny. This is kind of the equivalent of that. After I get them all nice and clean and trimmed up, I'm gonna go through with these. And this is gonna pull out the rest of this stuff, the rough hairs that's still in there. It's, it, I mean, I can't really get it with the comb. Remember, if you're going more than five swipes and you're not getting it, probably the wrong tool. This is gonna be the next tool to, to move up to. And this is the finishing tool. You don't wanna start with this, you wanna finish with this, okay. Just like just like waxing a car, you don't want to start with the wax. That's going to ruin everything. You want to finish with the wax. Okay. So, uh, scissor flip real quick. You just flip it, and that's it. All right. Hold on, Sebastian. Hold on, buddy. Okay. You want to stand up? There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, no, it's still too slippery. Okay. All righty. No, Sebastian. There we go. Okay. 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 There you go. There you go. Okay. You can stand if you want. There we go. Awesome. Good boy, Sebastian. See his feet? How they're nice and round? There we go. Nice and round and neat. Tidy that up there. There we go. I'm gonna get this side. He's doing great. I think he knows he's on TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm on camera. I better behave. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Nice. Now I'm just going to go through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this time was pretty quick. There wasn't a lot of like that dead hair, like a lot of that stuff that comes out. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of that today. Yeah, next time, I think next time is going to be a little bit more. It's probably going to take more time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see here. <laughs> Tennessee granny. No, honestly, Tennessee granny, it's not that hard at all. Um, I made a vi separate video um, just on this, but you're already holding your shears like this, right? You hold your shears with this cradling it, right? In, in that little indent here. And that way, no matter what, it's always going to be still and you have control, right? You already have it in this position. All you do is just take your thumb out, right? And use your index finger here to push it up. And then as you push it up, it's going to fall into your pinky. So you want to keep your pinky sticking out like that. 
So you hold your shears like this with your index finger, push it up, and then it's going to fall and you catch it with your pinky and that's it. And then when you're ready to use it again, you can either pull it back out this way or you can just flip it back out that way. Hopefully the, the shears don't open up on you like that, like that. And if it does, probably just tighten it a little bit. There we go. And then you can do this and flip it out that way as well. But it's just such a convenient tool because it's right there and it's hidden. See, the, the point of the scissors right there so that the dogs can't hurt themselves, nobody gets hurt. And then, bam, you know, it's right there ready to use. Consider I'm working with 73-year-old fingers. <laughs> Enjoy your younger. <laughs> Oh man, Tennessee Grady, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I get it. As I'm getting older too, losing control over my bodily functions. I can't read small letters anymore. It's crazy. Like this bottle here, like I'm starting to like, what in the world? My, my eyesight's starting to go, it's crazy. And I can tell that I'm starting to lose my hearing because I, like, I have to ask people to repeat themselves now. It's crazy, I'm only 41. Like what in the world? Anyways, let me go ahead and finish this dog up. Okay. Oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, yeah, I gotta clean the ears. So this area. And he feels so clean. He feels so soft. Let me go ahead and clean his ears. Alrighty. Do we have ear cleaner? Ear cleanser for dogs. Perfect. Okay. Alrighty. Cotton balls. All right. And I'm just using what they have here. Um, at the Optic Advance, it's like a ear cleanser for dogs, cats, puppies, kittens. All right. Which must mean it must be very gentle because there's not a lot of dog products that you can use on cats because cat's skin is more sensitive so if it works on dogs and cats, it's, it's got to be pretty gentle, pretty mild. There we go. Okay. All right. Wow, look at that. Nasty. It's all brown. Okay. There we go. Nice and clean now. All right. All right. That ear is nice and clean. We got the other side. Yeah, you can shake. Thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> One day I'm gonna push it when he's having a bad day and he's gonna eat my face off. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, get on this side here. Okay. Pretty nasty. There we go. Alrighty. And so I'm just cleaning the dirty parts here. I don't really like to go in the canal and dig in and stuff, you know? I like to just clean what I can see on the outside here. There we go. So now his ear is nice and clean. See that nice clean color? There we go. All right. And then maybe with some dry cotton balls, some clean dry ones, and go through and just kind of dry it up. There we go. Get some of the excess. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, 
All I have to do is just go through with these. I'm gonna start with the more coarse one and then I'm gonna finish with this fine one. Alrighty. Nice. And see, it's not catching that much now because I went through and combed. And also he's not really blowing a lot of dead coat right now, which just means shedding. He's not really shedding a lot. But next month, I have a feeling he's gonna be shedding more and it's gonna take more work, more time, more effort. There we go. But because I'm doing a thorough job today, it's not really gonna be like too much either. It's not gonna be like, you know, overwhelming. There we go. Good boy. Look at all that, see? And he feels so soft now, where I just brushed. Holy cow, he feels so soft. One second, buddy. Okay. Good boy. Good boy, Sebastian. What a handsome man. Okay. Oh, wow. Here we go. Nice. Wow. See all that? Good boy. There we go. You're such a good boy, Sebastian. See that? Wow, your foot's gonna feel so much better, buddy. So much softer. Wow, look at all this. Wow, coming out of your skin, buddy. My goodness, Sebastian. Okay. There you go. Don't bite me, bro, okay? Don't bite me, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. I never, I never thought I'd say this out loud, but I love it when you lick my face, buddy. There you go, lick my face, lick it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh man, why is that exciting me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so. I never thought I would enjoy having my face licked. Apparently, I do. <laughs> okay. So I guess any face lickers out there, um, contact me at junethegroomer at gmail.com. No, <laughs> right, buddy? You're a face licker, right? That's why we get along, right? Yeah. You want me to lick your face? I'll lick your face right back, buddy, if you want. I reciprocate. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the selfish. I don't just take. Let me lick your face. <laughs> you beat me to it. You just lick my tongue. I hope I don't get sick, buddy. All right. Our tongues just touched like the tip. It's crazy. It was, it was romantic. Oh. And there we go. My power is low. I'm about to run out of batteries. Okay. Wow, this tail is thick. There we go. See, it's all of this stuff. 
There we go. But after this, we're pretty much done. You know, it's the final finishing brush here. All right, so if you wanted to do this at home, if you're following along, the tools that I would suggest in, in this order would be, um, uh, the slicker brush first, this is gonna help break up the coat, you know, so you can get the comb through without much resistance. Then I would try this comb, something coarse and wide and, and strong um, to pull out all that dead hair, the bundles of dead hair. If this is not working for you that well, it's catching too much and it's not really moving that much, then you wanna go through with this, the steam adding rake, and this is gonna split and bust open those, break up those mats for you. Then you can go through with this. Once you go through with the whole dog with this, then you move down to this, like a more finer tooth comb. Then when you go through the entire dog with this, then you finish with this and then this, even finer. And then you have a dog that's gonna smell good for weeks. Um, he, if he goes outside and gets muddy, and just let him dry because this live healthy hair is sealed and has oil on it it'll literally fall off. Like if he gets muddy, let him dry and it'll fall off of his, his coat. He, this, this coat here, this healthy hair is almost like a self-cleaning system. It keeps itself clean. The reason why it starts to not keep itself clean is because this starts to accumulate. And once enough of, of this rough dead hair accumulates, then even though you have this beautiful, silky smooth, soft dog underneath, we can't tell because it's hidden under all this rough dead hair. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I feel like this is artwork. Even though this looks like just manual labor, like a dirty job, to me, this is artwork because this beautiful dog was always in there. I simply chiseled away the excess, right? I simply chiseled away the excess. And now I brought this beautiful dog out into the world. Just like Michelangelo says, I did not create uh, King David. King David was already in the marble. I simply chiseled away the excess, right? And that's what dog grooming is. Okay. Chiseling away the excess. There we go. Nice. All right. Wow. So soft. Don't scoff. I worked really hard for this. Might not matter to you, buddy, but this matters to me. It means something to me, buddy. You know? Shoot, you just scoff at someone's artwork like that? <laughs> well, I guess when you're big and strong like that, you know, <laughs> you can scoff at whoever you want. Okay. There we go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I just got a nice long shot of my backside. I usually charge for that, but you know, you guys can have it. All right. Here we go. All right. No, don't growl at me, buddy. Okay. Starting to lose his patience. There you go. I'm sorry, Sebastian. I'm almost done. All right. No, Sebastian. Don't growl at me, bro. No. 
You see that? Oh my goodness. Don't, don't go on me, buddy. buddy. <laughs> Shoot, I can't even talk. I'm so scared. Okay. Okay, there we go. Good boy. Good boy, Sebastian. There we go. I don't think he realizes how scary it is when a big dog like him starts growling at you and starts curling their lips at you. Oh man, it's intimidating. Good boy. There we go. Okay. Come this way. This way, Sebastian. Okay. There we go. This way. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, are you okay? There we go, sorry. Slipping on his dead hair all over here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Sebastian. Being so patient. All right. All righty. And I think that's about it. Look at him. Let's do like a little. See? Wow, buddy. So clean. His ears are clean now. See how clean that is. There we go. Nice and clean. His feet are nice and trimmed. There we go. Let's get some of that dead hair out of there. His tail is nice and combed out and soft. Good job, buddy. Awesome, Sebastian. Look at all of this hair. Isn't that crazy? Actually, this is not that bad, though. Not that not bad. Um, it's going to be much more next month when I come back because that's probably when he's going to be shedding and changing coat. All righty. So I'm going to clean up a little bit. Let's see here. Lillian Friday says, I understand now. Oh, no, hope you don't get doggy pox. <laughs> I was actually thinking about some herpes. You know what I'm saying? Look at that guy. Good looking as he is. You know, he's been around. Shoot, I just, anyways. <laughs> the chance you take when you when you lick, you know, tongues with. Uh... <laughs> All right, anyways. Hi, June. Finally caught you live. What's up, JS? My, my initials are JS. JSY, June Sun Yoon. Anyways, that's pretty cool. Got to go get my tools using, got to go get my tools was, was using the right brush. Okay. Rebecca says, love you, June. Love the joy you share. I also enjoyed your book, Good Perspectives. Wow, Rebecca, thank you so much. That means so much. <sighs> the crazy thing is what gave me the courage to actually write the book um, and publish it was my mentor convinced me that no one would read it and not not as a mean thing that's i don't want anybody to be like oh wow he's mean no he, he was trying to give me the courage to publish it and it was never going to be perfect enough it was never going to be um critic critic proof enough you know what i'm saying and i just i was working on it and working on it and i remember one time he just um, looked at me he said june why are you writing this book and i looked at him confused i was like because you told me to write the book. You're my mentor, you know? You told me to write the book. And JS, are you gonna be super soon? No. Um, but uh, he, he was like, he laughed. He said, nobody writes a book because somebody tells them to, you know? He was like, really, why are you putting in all this effort? And why are you writing this book? <clears throat> and I thought about it and I was like, I'm gonna tell him what he wants to hear, right? I'm gonna tell him the right answer, quote unquote, the right answer. So I told him, uh, I, I feel like this is a really important message um, for to tell the world and share with the world. And, you know, there's a passion of mine, so I just wanted to share it. And he looked at me, he goes, really? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And he goes, you're not, you don't have hopes of becoming a best-selling author one day? I was like, no. <laughs> and then he was like, you don't have hopes of selling lots of copies and making money off this book? 
And I was like, no. And I was thinking, did this guy read my journal? Like, what in the world? How does he know he's got me pinned, right? Oh, my goodness. The best adult. Anyways, let me, let me report. Unwanted spam. Yes. There we go. Reported them. Awesome. And remove. Remove. Sorry, guys. That is uncalled for. <laughs> There we go. But anyways, so he, he, he was like, okay, good. Well, so he asked me, uh, you don't have, um, you know, secret ambitions to become a best-selling author one day or sell lots of copies of your book and make money. I was like, no, answer was really yes. <laughs> but I was ashamed to say yes, you know? And he goes, good, because you won't. He was like, you'll never become a best-selling author and no one's going to read this book. You know, no one's going to buy it. And I was just like, what? He just like crushed my dreams, right? So then I looked at him kind of confused and I was like, well, then explain to me why I'm writing this book. You know, I was like, if no one's going to read it and I have no chance of becoming a best-selling author, why am I writing the book? And he, he took out a piece of paper. He wrote my name, comma, author. He put author at the end and he said, that's why you're writing this book. So you could put that at the end of your name and it'll be true. And he says, if anybody wants to disagree and say, hey, you're not really an author, show them your book. Say, here you go. I wrote this book. I'm an author. And then he says, um, if anybody wants to disagree with what's in the book, they're going to have to read it and they won't bother. <laughs> and I was like, that's so genius, right? He was like, you're not writing the book to, to, to sell it or to get anyone to read it. He was like, your own mom probably won't read it. He was like, you can give it to all your best friends. They won't read it. He was like, because it's hard to get people to read books these days. He was like, even best-selling authors have a hard time getting people, getting their books in people's hands and getting them to read it. He was like, you're an unknown author and you're not skilled. And he was like, you're inexperienced. So it would be ridiculous to even think that anybody would sit down and read your book. And he was like, no one's going to buy it. No one's going to read it. The point is not for them to do, not for anybody else. It's for you. It's for me. It's for, so that I become an author. I become an authority figure in my industry it's like my calling card you know i wrote a book about what i do i love it so much right and so that's what gave me the courage to publish it because i was convinced he convinced me that nobody would read my book and i was like so i felt safe i felt like okay well then let me just publish it you know now that people are actually telling me like they love the book and i've getting so many great responses i just feel overwhelmed with gratitude i feel so grateful i feel so humble i feel like wow it's incredible that anybody would take take the time and read my book and you know actually get something out of it that they enjoyed that means everything to me and if you want to read a copy of my book you can actually download it for free go to my website oh no. junethegroomer.com www.junethegroomer.com that's my blog um, search on the side tab there, um, download both my ebooks for free and it'll take you to the page, the blog article that I wrote with the link to my Google drive and it's in my Google drive. As long as you click on that link, you can download it from my Google drive and you'll have um, a copy of my ebook, the art of grooming and the four steps to a beautiful groom, which go through my process. So, um, yeah, the art of grooming is more my physical, my philo philosophical approach, how to view grooming. The four steps is actually my practical application of my philosophy, how I apply that and put it into four steps, which I use for my grooming process. So those are my two books um, available for free to download on my website. If you're on Kindle and you're a Prime member, it's available for free on Kindle. All right. See you guys. I hope that helps. I'm going to clean up here. <laughs>